Mi 11 Ultra, undeniably one of the most wanted smartphones ever. I've used it as a daily driver for more than six months. How did it all go and which are all the strong and weak sides? Let's inspect! Hey, welcome everybody, tech Pro channel, my name is Michael. And yes, we carry on with the tech inspections, uh, this time six months later me 11 ultra i really wanted to make this video after the holiday season because you know what happens before big holidays a lot of youtubers and tech reviewers make nice polished videos about stuff because they want to make you buy these things and i wanted to avoid any possible conflict of interest so now relaxed we can talk about this smartphone in a matter of fact i've switched to another uh, smartphone a couple of months ago therefore now from distance of time I can assess and say a lot of good, maybe not so good things about Mi 11 Ultra and this video is going to be about this. Now, uh, we know this is a dream phone for many of you, it costs really a lot of money and unfortunately has been hindered by all these part and chip shortages throughout 2021 and therefore a lot of people have decided to go for the Chinese edition, unlock the bootloader, flash some software and hope it's going to be working fine. Well. I've been doing this many times with my OnePlus devices in the past years, but given the fact there are so many services that you can break and most likely you wouldn't pass Google's safety net afterwards, I'm not really sure if it's worth the effort. Anyhow, now this video is going to be divided into three major sections and so we're going to talk about the camera, the hardware and the software. So, the cameras. Performance in its own league. You won't believe how much of footage shot with the Mi 11 Ultra is in the reviews that I've published. And I'm sure that you will hardly notice any difference to Sony ZV-1 or even the full-frame Sony A7C which I use all the time. Simply because the camera setup is impressive. However, I've only used the native MIUI camera app for the photos. The 5 times zoom telephoto camera with the image stabilization is brilliant and amazing. If you need good zoom, just switch to it. All the lenses on the back are optically stabilized, means that minor shakes are gonna be compensated. Colors are okay, sometimes really great, sometimes not as they should be. I noticed that with artificial light the tint goes in direction magenta and this looks a bit unrealistic. Not horrible, but some photos are just not good looking if this defect shows up. I didn't notice this issue at the first place during my thorough camera test because I mostly took photos outside at very bright or very dark conditions. In that regard, the Samsung and iPhone color science are better. But when it comes to details and consistency, especially with video, nothing comes even close to Mi 11 Ultra. I've recently switched to OnePlus 9 Pro, three major reasons, size, software and the alert slider. And while I really enjoy the lighter software experience on OnePlus, I do miss a lot the battery endurance and mostly the cameras, especially for video. If you want to hear some best practices and probably count on some tips and tricks, the first advice I have to you, download the Gcam app. It's a modified version of the Google camera app. It makes brilliant photos and I think the color science is a lot better than what is included with the MIUI camera app. The second thing I'm really grateful I, I figured out and did was to buy ProTake for video recording, which uh, well, that's yet another smartphone app which allows you to access some professional grade features of the camera app including shutter speed control and ISO control. And it's true, MIUI's camera video pro mode allows you to go to these settings. However, it wouldn't record in 24 or 25 frames per second in 1080p and 4K. The ultra wide sensor is also a brilliant one, a bit wider than the competition which is great and the main image sensor is stopping the chart for the good reasons. It's still very challenging for me to understand all the Samsung fanboys who deliberately dislike my comparison. There is no way to say that S21 Ultra's camera is better than the one in Mi 11 Ultra. Color science, yes. Camera app, yes. But the camera overall performance is... Just take the Mi 11 Ultra for some time and you're gonna see it for yourself. If you need a phone that extracts the maximum out of today's photography tech for smartphones, this one is it. 
Next comes the hardware, little things that make the phone amazing. Nice display on the rear. You can use it as a reference display for photos, also for videos, but up to 15 seconds. Xiaomi never really properly enabled it. With having such a good ultra-wide camera, framing is easy even without it, so honestly, I can live without it, meaning that if this is not the major reason that attracts you by the Mi 11 Ultra, think about getting the Mi 11 Pro. The main display is super duper cool, I like the colors and the tuning, but subjectively, I like the S21 Ultra's display better. On the other hand, Mi 11 Ultra's display is much nicer than the one utilized by OnePlus 9 Pro. As for battery life, despite the not too good Snapdragon 888 inside, it's been doing rather okay. Yes, there is a very big, <laughs> for this scale of phones, battery inside with very, very, very quick charging capability. But we know that all the flagships of 2021, which are equipped with the Snapdragon 888, are not great about battery life. Most likely because this system on chip is manufactured by Samsung, but that's another topic. So this phone, in terms of battery endurance, has been consistently good, providing me between day and a half to two days of battery life, while the OnePlus 9 Pro was usually is usually giving me one day at a charge. And the difference in the battery size is not that significant. Which means that optimizations here are in place, and I'm very impressed with the standby performance, which most of the times has been working okay, but sometimes there have been apps which didn't go to sleep, therefore the phone was staying awake all the time. It was consuming quite a lot of power in standby mode, which was easily fixable through just a simple reboot. In terms of design, it still looks great. I love this uh, back cover, although I always carry it with the case. And here's a fun fact. For all these months, when I'm actively using Mi 11 Ultra, I never managed to drop the phone on the ground. I've been three weeks around the seaside, very challenging conditions, and I'm, I'm using the OnePlus 9 Pro in the past month, I dropped it already three times. Kind of weird. The only phone that fell worse in that regard is S21 Ultra by Samsung with a bumpier case. True, Mi 11 Ultra is the first phone that I use for that long and have never dropped on the ground. So maybe size is not a huge issue after all. But I hated the feeling when it is in my pocket, because it is both big and heavy. In terms of hardware, I don't think it has anything missing, it's just about right to be called Ultra. If you need something to criticize, USB 2.0 being used, but let me show you the difference of copying big files from and to the phone and compare it to USB 3.0 based smartphone with similar storage performance. I promise to cover the software as well. MIUI inside up to version 13 at the time I'm recording this episode. Well, sometimes the software felt depressingly laggy. Yeah, kind of weird for such a great flagship. Uh, other than that, we know that MIUI has a lot of features, but the animations, because they try to be more like Apple, I guess, uh, especially if you do like me, and the first thing I do when I get an Android-based smartphone is to lower the animations to 0.5, I guess this makes MIUI's animations look even worse. I hated the fact that using a third-party launcher doesn't work good with clearing apps from the recents bar. I dislike the implementation of Bluetooth Unlock because unless you use only Mi devices, Google's Smart Lock absence is also very annoying. For the six months of using this phone, there were only two updates. Samsung S21 Ultra, on the other hand, has received like five of them. I already got three updates for OnePlus 9 Pro in less than a month. There are, on the other hand, some things that are done right. I like so much the way the torch works, and you can shut it off by pressing the power button. The fingerprint is readable at any point of time. With OnePlus, I need to enable the display somehow, usually with a double tap, and then it can read my thumb. Battery consumption graph is also cool, and the themes engine, if you decide to use it at all. But overall, the impression that I got from MIUI is that it feels like driving a truck. Very powerful, but a bit slow. The OnePlus 9 Pro, on the other hand, feels like a racing car. So, close to perfect hardware, uh, maybe the best camera setup ever designed on a flagship smartphone, 
And software which can sometimes be really annoying. This is how I can summarize my experience with Mi 11 Ultra so far. But I'm thankful for each and every day when I have the chance to use this smartphone as a primary one because above anything else, it's extremely reliable. Therefore, I can certainly recommend it. Although expensive, I think it's well worth the money. And I really hope the last few minutes make good sense. If you happen to know something else or probably want to share some experience or simply have a question, please be invited. Comment down below. Of course, links to the products that you have seen throughout this episode are somewhere in the description. And thank you so much for watching this video on my channel. Such a pleasure. I'm Michael and would be glad to inspect some more cool tech for you very, very soon. Have a great day. Bye.